Didn't I say blunt-headed booby to Falmouth? To Falmouth? By way of fleet. Oh, not a fair. You were saying. Evil, evil, evil. Nothing but slander, wickedness, and lies. Nes pa, Father Collin. Mm -hmm. What is your book, Father Collimani? St. Stanislaus Kostka, my child. Kostka? Oh, it sounds like one of those islands, those savage islands. Where my darling son Dick stopped at once, just to write to his old mother. Uh, where is he now, Eliza? Off the coast of Jamaica. The his ship. It's that crazy shepherd David too. The brother, you know, of that extraordinarily extraordinary girl. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, how, uh, how if the glorious virgin required you to take this young fellow onto your wing? For the sake, I presume, of his soul. Not precisely. But uh, is he ripe? Ripe? Well, I mean... Uh, I, I trust we shall be in Valmouth before the shops close. I did require a ribbon. <laughs> That's Madame Yajna Valkya, the masseuse. Those appliances of hers that she flaunts. In massaging her cases... I'm told she has a trick of... She's not Indeed. So poor Mary Wilkes's nurse told my maid. When was Mrs. Wilkes a hundred? Only last week. Oh, nowadays, around Valmouth, centenarians will soon be as common as peas. The air. There's no air to compare to it. Valmouth air. Valmouth Air. At the Strangers Hotel, it seems there's not a single vacant bed. Victor Vat, the delicate paysagist, came yesterday, and Lady Pavel de Ponzoust was to arrive today. Oh, I was her bridesmaid many years ago, and she was no girl then. She stands, I fear, poor thing now, for something younger than she looked. Fine, Carapet. Fine, Father. Ah, la jeunesse, hélas. Oh, but the air, the air of Falmouth. Falmouth by Sandy Wilson, based on the novel by Ronald Furbank. With Elizabeth Welsh as Mrs. Yajnia Valkia, Vanella Fielding as Lady Pavola de Ponzoust, Doris Hare as Granny Took, Betty Hardy as Mrs. Thoroughfare, Maxine Audley as Mrs. Hurst Pierpoint, Aubrey Woods as Cardinal Pirelli, Elaine Dalmar as Neri Esther, Patsy Rowlands as Thetis Took, and Marcia Ashton as Sister Ecclesia. Valmouth. Valmouth, there's nowhere to compare with the air of Valmouth. There's no light that's as bright as the light of Valmouth on the banks of the Val, circled by the Friendly hills, sheltered by the sky. Safe are we from worldly ills. Time that kills passes us by. In Falmouth, every care seems to fade in the air of Falmouth. There's a bomb to be found in the calm of Falmouth on the banks of the Val. Come and spend. Smile with us and learn to laugh and smile with us. And when you leave, it's strange as it seems. Valmouth stays in your feet. Welcome back to Valmouth, Lady Barbara. Thank you, Sir Victor. And how is London? Oh, London is simply exhausting. It leaves you more dead than alive. But now that I'm once more in Valmouth, already I start to revive. Society life is so tiring. It leaves you quite rinsed out and wrung. But now that I'm once more in Valmouth, I'm suddenly wonderfully young. It's the air, it's the air, it's the beautiful Valmouth air. Well, whatever it is, it's doing wonders for me. Valmouth, there's no air to compare with the air of Valmouth. There's no light that's as bright as the light of Valmouth. On the banks of the Val, circled by the friendly Sheltered by the sky, safe are we from 
Dominus Fobiscum. How charming! So, you lost Pierre Ernest, Eulalia. Alas, he preferred flitting about the world like you. I go about, as other fools, in quest of pleasure, and I usually find tedium. Oh, we must try and help you avoid it whilst you are in Valmouth. Will you dine at Hare tomorrow evening? I am all anticipation. <laughs> Good evening, good evening, it certainly is a most entrancing evening. This early Valmouth spring is such a pleasure for me. Although I fear it's not a time of leisure for me For spring can be a source of such insidious ills Like nervous strains and stomach pains and liverish chills So I hope that you will bear with me in case the point applies If I take this opportunity to advertise <laughs> me. If you are suffering from any of the following disorders, neuritis, fibrositis, colitis or arthritis, lumbago or a little touch of gout, bronchitis, hepatitis, cystitis or phlebitis, or just a tendency to getting stout, or any kindred ailment that this flesh of ours is heir to, then ladies, I'd be happy to enroll you if you'd care to undertake a course of me. For my new inclusive fee, here's my card. Oh, thank you. For me. Mrs. Yasnavalkia, that's the most bizarre of names. Can she really do such wonders as she claims? I'd be happy to prove it, my lady, to you. We shall see. But tell me, Mrs. Yasnavalkia, what is your secret? My secret? Why, it isn't any secret. It's a well-known fact that I've got magic fingers where I touch the magic lingers and those evil spirits fly. In all your pain and misery you'd banish. Then come to me and with a touch I'll make them vanish with my magic digits, I can soothe your aches and fidgets, and I'll safely prophesy. If you care to try me, you will find I'm speaking true. For I've got magic fingers, let my magic fingers work their magic spell on you. <laughs> Ladies, I am also an expert in cosmetics, dietetics, obstetrics, animetics, and other rather esoteric skills. And I possess prescriptions of numerous descriptions of bombs and bombs, lozenges and pills. And if you've 
any problem that requires a special knowledge, I've also a diploma from an Eastern ladies' college that entitles me to sell aphrodisiacs as well. Here's my card. I've got magic fingers where I touch the magic lingers and those evil spirits fly. If all your pain and misery you'd banish, then come to me and with a touch I'll make them vanish. If my magic digits, I can soothe your aches and fidgets and I'll safely prophesy. If you care to try me, you'll find I'm speaking true. For I've got magic fingers, let my magic fingers work their magic spell on you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, Come, Elizabeth. Tomorrow evening, Pavula. Eight-ish, just the three of us. <coughs> oh, and Father Collie, of course. Oh, uh, I'm delighted. Too much bliss. Hey, boy. Here. Hard dog. Oh. David. Is that you, David? Hi, Granny. Any orders? Uh, Mrs. Yard wants a boiler or an extra butter at the hotel. Be sure to see the prices, Mrs. But for the next have gone up. Why, if at the old day, you might propose a pair of pigeons or two to the cook. Yeah, I will. Oh, uh, good evening, ma'am. I, uh... Yes, ma'am? I wonder if you could tell me the way to uh, the cathedral. The cathedral? Oh, there ain't no cathedral around these parts, so far as I know. But that'd be St. Veronica's. St. Veronica's? How sweet. Such a helpful girl. Thank you, good fellow. Oh, no trouble, ma'am. No trouble at all. Oh. Quel joli garçon. Quite as bad instead of Dorsey. Un cupidon déchaîné. Such a build. And such a voice. He must be mine. In my manner. In my way. I always told my dear late lord I could love a shepherd. Peace be to his soul. <laughs> Feathers? Feathers, fetch out my chair. It's time for Mrs. Yash to come and give me a massage. Oh, if only I could get about the place like once I did. Maybe with warmer weather here you will. This very night the old sweet briar tree came out. The old sweet briar. None of us thought it could. Don't you let me hear you talk of thinking. <laughs> More feather brain girl than never lived. I often think at any rate, I was born for something more brilliant than waiting on you. Impudent baggage! Make ready my thing of me, Mrs. Yard is coming. Hey, see ho. It's good to be still alive. And how do you find yourself, Mrs. Took? Oh, to be open with you, Mrs. Yatch, I feel today is the far my joints want soilin'. Oh, it will pass. I shall not let you slip through my fingers. Oh, no. Your life with me is so precious. Oh, I can't hope to last very much longer, Mrs. Yatch. Anyway, I suppose. That is for me to say. Um... How is your young granddaughter's erotomania, Mrs. Took? Does it increase? God knows, Mrs. Yash, what it does. We Eastern women never take love serious. Mm -hmm. And why is this, Mrs. Took? Because it is so serious. 
Low in the east, Mrs. Yarge, I presume, is only feasible indoors. <laughs> Nobody bothers, Mrs. Took. Common couples with no place else often go into the jungle. Those cutting winds of yours must be about a cotton. <laughs> Our cutting winds? It is you who have the cutting winds. It is not us. Oh, no, 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 no. In the east, it is joy, heat. Then where do those wicked blasts come from? Never you mind now, Mrs. Took. But just cross those two dear knees of yours and do what I bid you. Oh, Allah ilaha. I shall have you soon up and about again, I hope. And then you shall visit me. Oh, you must come and see my blossoming acacia tree. We'll sit and talk and watch the blossoms fall. And later on you'll taste my peaches and my cherries. And when the winter comes, you'll see my holly berries. Oh, holly is my favorite of them all. Holly, Mrs. Yatch. Yes, Holly, Mrs. Took. For every time I see the holly on the bough, I think of my late husband and how that beard of his would prickle just like the holly on the bough. Your late husband, Mrs. Yatch. That's right, my dear. Now, now, what did you tell me his name was again, my dear? His name was Mustafa. Mustafa. What a man. was all the world to me his kisses were like wine like wine from the finest vine and when he commenced caressing lordy I don't mind confessing Paradise was mine. Can you imagine? Mustafa, Mustafa, how my cup would feel if my beloved Mustafa. When he told me you belongs to me, I tell him, honey, I'm so glad. He had a way of making love to me I've never known before or since. That man to me was a lion. Yes, he was a prince. Oh, a prince, Mrs. Yatch. Oh, that's royalty, my dear. His name was Mustafa, Mustafa, how my soul would thrive if my beloved Mustafa He was a devil. <laughs> oh, some ever. Thaddeus, where you off to so consequent? Just out. 
That enlarged heart of hers should be seen to Mrs. Took. Do persuade her now to try my sitz baths. I sell twelve tickets very cheap, one dozen for only five shillings. Oh, that won't cure her of her idiocy. <laughs> what did you see, pray, dear lady? She thinks she's going to marry young Dick Thoroughfare. And become mistress of Hare Hatch? Mm. Oh, she thinks that, do she? David? Yes, Granny? Where's your sister gone to? That is. Yes, I'd be wanting my supper. Oh, she's likely down by the river. River? What takes her there, may I ask? Who knows? I'll fetch her home. And now, Mrs. Took, let us go to your bedroom, and I shall administer your vibro. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Yarrick. I pretend it binds me to the sea, where my sweetheart is, my betrothed. Betrothed? You mean Captain Dick? Who else? Ah, oh, you're a simple one, you are. Me? Yes, you. Oh, don't be horrid, David, to me. You mustn't be. It's bad enough quite without, what with Granny. She'll not be here for long. I don't think she'll die just yet. It's a cruel climate. Aye, cruel. Now, you'd best come home. Granny's in a regular fury with him. Give me just a few minutes, then I'll come. I promise. All right. Deuce, boy! Deuce! I loved a man, and he sailed away. I is a deadly awful place. With the air presumptive so much away, it's bound to be slow and quiet. 
Why the captain should be heir of heir, I never could make out. Mr. Dick's dead father, Admiral Thoroughfare, was a close relative of Mrs. Hurst. Indeed, they might have married. Only he was too poor, and things fell out otherwise. There's Lady de Ponzu's cab. Run and meet her. Be sharp about it. Right, Mr. Fines. Please tell the cabby to return for me at ten o'clock. Very well, my lady. Good evening, Fines. Nobody about? The mistress, I presume, is with the scourge. Poor Eulalia. Still mortifying the flesh at her age. Tell me, Fines, is it true that she sometimes assumes spiked garters? As to that, my lady, I couldn't say. But Fowler reports that she wears a bag of holly leaves pinned to the lining of her gown. Will that be all, my lady? Yes, thank you, Fines. Thank you, my lady. As for me, it would take more than a scourge to keep my flesh in check. Oh, the very thought of that shepherd sets me in a ferment. Tomorrow I shall tax the negress. Ah, oh, welcome once more to hell. Why, Elizabeth, tonight you look positively jeune fille. I always say that there is no joy like the coolness of a white dress after the sweetness of confession. What news do you have from Dick? No letters lately, naughty boy, but a crate of some wonderful etherized flowers. Came from him only this afternoon from Ceylon. Even at Oomanton, 13 of the new hybrids this year are quite too perfect. Oh, Eulalia and I often speak of the wondrous orchids at Oomanton Towers. We are very proud of a rose lipped one with a lilac beard. A lilac what? Eulalia! Is it Sodom? Goodness, no. Because Father Collie won't hear of it ever before dessert. All right. He seems to think it quite soon enough. Ah, oh, dearest Pavila, how jolly to have you with us again. Uh, was it you, Betty, before office, I heard amusing yourself in Our Lady? <laughs> I am sure, you, Lelia, I forget. After the Sixtine Chapel, I somehow think your chapel is the one I prefer. You dear, you. Oh, you should have been with us Easter Day. Our little basilica was a veritable bower of love. Have you any more new relics? Only the tooth of St. Automata Mary's, for which I've had my tiara stones turned into a reliquary. Dinner is served. Ah, oh, thank you, Fines. Shall we? Mm. I had you're dining on Petit Comité. Where can Father be? While we are alone, you must tell me all the gossip of Valma. Mm, well, there's not much, I fear, to tell. If I recollect, um, the, the cattle show was our last gaiety. You're pathetic, mm. curious oxen. It's a breed you don't see everywhere. My husband... Mm. My Harry tried them in the park at Oomanton Towers, but it didn't do. No, I suppose the town is full of imaginary invalids, come to rule. My dear, one sees nothing else. So many horrid parliament men come here, apparently purely to bust. Men, men, they're always there, dear, aren't they? As the Russians say. <laughs> Nowadays, um, a man, to me, uh, somehow... Uh, Oh, he's something so wildly strange. Well, some men are ultra-womanly, and they're the kind I love. I suppose that none but those whose courage is unquestionable could venture to be effeminate. It may be so. It was only in wartime, was it, that the Spartans were accustomed to put on perfumes or to crimp their beards? My dear, how your mind seems to dwell upon beards. Beards. Beard. A beard is a thing I adore, but a beard that is really a beard, one just doesn't see anymore. Moustaches, moustaches, that's what I chiefly miss, for moustachios add pilka shows to a kiss. I was always keen on whiskers, but I found in the last resort, if you held a man by the whiskers, he was well and truly caught. <laughs> But we're sad, sad to say that, that the men today are, are a dull, clean-shaven lot. And the men we loved have all passed on. Like the world we knew, they are dead and gone. And we sometimes wonder what 
to do with the world we've got. You little fabulous Elizabeth. It only seems like yesterday when life was like a song. And all the girls were pretty. And all the men were strong. The world appeared a better place where nothing could go wrong. For all the girls were pretty. And all the men were strong. The sun was always shining in a bright blue sky above. And we were always frantically, romantically in love. Other time, that other place is where we all belong. Where all the girls were pretty and all the men were strong. Do you remember Coco Fook? Flosses and Vincent and Pinbos and Doofus. Twirly Rogers and Bushy Ames. They all of them had such expressive names. And the Duke of Blue on a great black nag. And Hunting Pink with the Falmouth Drag. And Monkey Trotter in Guardsman's Rig. Doing a rather suggestive jig. And Princess Zafara who came to stay and changed her tiara. Twice a day. <laughs> and Laura Van who with that purple hair who once ran nude through the market square. <laughs> and Bungy Sussex, the Earl, I mean, who used old brandy as brilliant tea. <laughs> and Violet Log, who eloped with a sheik. <laughs> and, and was, was always drunk during her holy week. <laughs> <laughs> How fine they were. How sublime they were. How great and grand in their prime they were. They, they were bold and beautiful, brave and true. And, and it goes without saying that we were too. The sun was always shining in a bright blue sky above. And we were always frantically, romantically in awe. That other time, that other place, is where we all belong, where all the girls were pretty and all the men were strong. With the Dominus Vobiscum. Good evening, ladies. Nominee Pagefilius, but you sang the other. You know, Verve, Beaujolais, Clovuxe, or Chateau Thierry, my lady. If only not to be too like everyone else, mon ami, you shall give me some of each. Yes, my lady. <coughs> Apropos, His Eminence writes that he may be visiting this country before too long. The dear Cardinal, he must stay here with us. Which Cardinal do you speak of? Why, Cardinal Pirelli, of course. He owes, they say, to women at least half of his red hat. Oh, thoroughfare. Oh, what is it, Pavula? Uh, through the window there, I, I thought I saw a figure in nun's habit dancing between the cypresses. Ah, that will be Sister Ecclesia. She comes from the convent of Arimathea at Sodbury. So... But why is she dancing? She was always over-talkative, so the abbess imposed upon her a vow of silence. She is only allowed to speak three times a year. Poor creature. The rest of the time she expresses herself in movement, even dancing. <laughs> oh, Parviola, you are tasting nothing. For my sake, allow Dr. D of Valmouth to systematically overhaul you. Dr. D? To tell the truth, I was thinking of visiting Mrs. Yajna Valkia. Oh, really, Pavula? When? Tomorrow, perhaps. Shall we take coffee in the drawing room? 
after your super excellent champagne. I feel one ought to go with bad feet in pilgrimage to your chapel and kindle a wax light or two. My dear, I believe you've latent proclivities. I never. Are you coming, Elizabeth? Yeah, the, in one moment, Julia. <laughs> I, I must speak to Father first. Don't, dear, desert us. Do you think, Father, she suspects? Oh, rest assured, my poor child. Your confession to me tonight exceeds belief. Oh, oh my darling son, how could you? Oh, my poor child, try not to fret. It makes one belch, Father. Belch. They're joined irremediably. I understand. From what he writes, I conclude the worst. Won't you show me what he says? Well, the card is covered, I fear, by the chemicals that were in the crate, gummed to the stem, as it was, of a nauseating lily. Uh, decipher the thing, then, to me, if you will. Uh, yes. Very well. These are the native wildflowers of my betrothed bride's country. <laughs> Forgive us and bless us, Mother. Ten thousand loves to you all. Oh, wretched boy. Oh, Father. That ever any black woman should perform the honors at hand. Black? Well, if it comes to that, Eulalia herself tonight is more than grubby. Or shall I start the steam? Not on my account. Very well, Mum. What is your boy? I did a didacti. Did a didacti. Kataka moka? Mawadi. Mawadi. Jelly. A breeze about their jelly. Have I not the satisfaction of addressing my lady de Panzust? I, uh. I believe you do chiropody. That is a speciality of the house. What is there so important? Oh, when I consider the foot, it bears the burden of 10,000 treasures. Cra! Perhaps sometimes it carries charms. That is my little niece, Niriesta. She sounds as if she were in love. In love? I sometimes see call here a young, tall man with his dog. He call only to fetch the fowls that flit across to my acacia tree from the farm. Is that all? He's awfully choice, oh. my lady. I suppose he is. Oh, yes, he's awfully, awfully choice. And I can tell you his physique is like the finest type of Greek is. And there's honey in the murmur of his voice. Oh, yes, he's choice, my lady. Bill, well, well, one knows he is. He's quite enough to make my lady's heart rejoice. And I can promise you that man is just as brown and strong as Pan is. In other words, my lady, he's choice. Then perhaps you could arrange a rendezvous for me somewhere safe. I have the very spot in mind. You can meet beneath my blossoming acacia tree and a safer place you couldn't hope to find. The shepherd boy I'll undertake to bring to you Say between the hours of three o'clock and four And my little Neary I shall tell to sing to you Some sweet love song or a passage from Tagore Ah, you should hear her recitations from Tagore But I shouldn't He's awfully choice, my lady. No, I shouldn't. So very choice, my lady. Why 
shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. But I shall. Just once more. No, I'm audacious and I know it. I should like to chuck my bonnet just as far as I can throw it. And I want to fascinate another man. Just to show my friends and enemies I can. Just once more. Before I have to throw the sponge in. I would like to cast convention to the winds of heaven and plunge into a love affair with everything on plus, which will probably provide my good grass. Oh, the urge that still manages to emerge from this all too willing flesh that I inhabit. Is there something wrong with me if I now appear to be just a still seductive? Non-productive rabbit, though I swore when my late husband puffed his soul out, I would try to stop the beast in me from throwing self-control out. Now I find myself confronted with a lad, though he mayn't compare with many that I've had. I'm unable to combat the need to add to my scars. Yeah. And so you shall, my lady, so you shall, beneath my blossoming acacia tree. Oh, I was thinking of that merely as a preliminary. I should prefer the climax to occur indoors. Just once more, I want to put my desapi on while I flutter around the room like some désorienté papillon, slapping on the strategic rouge and spraying scent where so much expensive scent already went. Just once more, ere Father Time applies his sickle, I would like to prove myself in one celestial slap and tickle, which will probably result in Lord knows what, but at least I'll use the assets I've still got, and I'm game for whatever he cares to name. For my motto's always been no harm in trying. Though it's likely, I suppose, I may not survive the throes. Still, I'll sink with my libido high and flying. And I'm sure that if the fates decide to claim me, while a few may sing my praise, there'll be a multitude to blame me. But whatever they may say, they can't deny that it must have been a lovely way to die. And upon my tombstone, let them carve that I cried on God just once too often. <laughs> I make you easy terms. Massage does not appeal to me. And otherwise, thank you, I'm perfectly well. And I also will endeavor to have a few fugitive fowls over from the farm. And you and your beloved shall attain nirvana. Nirvana? Leave it to me, and you and he shall come together. Deuce! Hey, Deucey boy! <laughs> oh. Come on, Deuce! Come now! He's awfully choice. Your fee. That is correct, I believe. He's awfully, awfully choice. C'est un assez beau garçon. Shirabakuba? <laughs> Mrs. Dick. Mrs. Dick Thoroughfare. Sushui? Mrs. Cap. Richard Thoroughfare of Hair Hatch House Appreciate with her kite. Here am I with arms that ache for him. Why they're aching, he ought to know. Every night I lie awake for him. What then can make him come? All day long I sit and sigh for him I'm still sighing when lights are low Don't 
Awful vividness of the lightning. Let us go, shall we both, and confess. My dear, in my opinion, the lightning's so much more ghastly through the stained glass window. <laughs> well, I intend to pray. Who knows, but our prayers may meet. <gasps> oh, love me even as I do thee, and I will land thee a fish. I will hook thee a heretic. A going infidel, and so I will make thee retribution for the follies of my youth. <sighs> um, Fowler? Yes, ma'am? Is the worst of the storm over yet, Fowler, do you consider? Now that the wind has deprived the statues of their fig leaves, ma'am, I can hardly bear to look out. <sighs> Unless the summer quickly mends, the centenarian's ball must be postponed. <gasps> Holy Virgin! Lift the lid of the long casket and pick me a relic. Anyone in particular, ma'am? No, but not a leg bone, mind. Yes, ma'am. <gasps> Yes, dear Lord, I promise faithfully a ripe heretic. Uh, my little kitchen maid, perhaps. I could certainly force her. Or, uh, yes, I'm sure she has proclivities. She could be shaken. Lady Parvula. Your relic, mum. Ah. Tea time, Eulalia. <sighs> Oh, very well. Uh, thank you, Fowler. That will be all. Thank you, ma'am. I did not expect you to finish your prayers so soon, Elizabeth. Look. Someone with a kite is on our lawn. No. <laughs> In the old days, sailing a kite heavenwards was my utmost felicity. This is no Christian and her kite, Eulalia. No Christian, Elizabeth. It's a savage. Oh, Lord, I thank thee. Thou hast sent me an infidel. I never saw the countryside so green 
It looks as if the rain has washed it clean And everything I see is like a friend to me And not a blessed mortal on the scene I've got the clover that grows in the meadow And the clouds flying by above And a nearby stream where the fishes gleam What do I want with love? I've got the song of the lark in the morning And the coo of the turtle dove I have heard the tale of the nightingale What do I want with love? What fools they be Whose hearts are never free I'm glad I'm me With a heart of my own as I walk alone Through the clover that grows in the meadow With the clouds flying by above There is no time I miss when I have all this So what do I want with love? Oh, Mr. Took I've been on the outskirts of town visiting a ruined stomach. I should be obliged, Mr. Took, if you could one day come to my garden bringing some manure for my little grape house. Manure is what my vine really needs. I could come tomorrow, maybe. Oh, I would be that grateful. And so, let me tell you, would a certain lady. A lady? Of aristocratic lineage. How much time for ladies, Mrs. Yarge? Why, Mr. Took, with your assets, you should make time. Otherwise, they'll all go to waste. Well, I'll see. You will see, and you won't, I promise you, regret it. Oh, Allah, Allah. If I cannot throw them both together, be it only out of doors, I will be obliged to quench love's fever with a sedative. Ah. With the clover that grows in the meadow And the clouds flying by above There is no time miss when I have all this So what do I want with love? Mrs. Yarch? Is that you, Mrs. Yarch? Why, Mrs. Took, that hat is charming, delicious. Do you think so, then? It's for the ball tonight, if I ever manage to arrive there. But of course you shall. Your grandson, Mrs. Took, seems insensitive to women. I think, my dear, he never has been truly enmeshed. He's unimpressionable, I'm thankful to say. I know of one lady who would like to impress him. Perhaps tonight at the ball I could confront him with her. Oh, the ball. Tomorrow I'd be as stiff as a rusty hinge. Oh, not while you're one of my clients, dear Mrs. Tuck. <laughs> you old black bogey. What should I do without you? <laughs> Said a hard thing, Mrs. Yarge, to be dependent on a wench who spends half her time in the river. If I was a fish, I'd snap at her legs. Uh, hey. Have you been crying again, Thaddeus? What if I have? You'll not die in an old skin if you fret it so, Thaddeus girl. That you won't. What's the use of living in any case? Unless you're happy. Oh, no. We like tonight at the ball. We both have a bit of a fling. There is nothing so exhilarating as a social occasion, and that's what I always say. Anytime they ask me out to a dinner or a rout, I accept with great alacrity. For perhaps you may have heard, I am quite a flighty bird, and an evening out appeals to me. What's the reason, do you ask me, that I thus react? 
Well, the reason, if you ask me, is the simple fact that I like dressing up for an evening ball or a social brawl in a fancy shawl or a silly frilly frock. And my big best shoes go nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock. I like dressing up in my finest clothes with my beads and bows and a scarlet rose in my silly frilly frock. And my big best shoes go nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock. I stick a purple or blue feather or two in my hair. What do I care if the people stare? Then from my jewelry case, every space I just fill till I am glittering fit to kill. Oh, the thrill when I start dressing up. Though my corsets creak, I am on a peak. For the feel so chic in my silly frilly frock. And my big best shoes go nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock, nick a nack a knock. She likes dressing up for an evening ball or a social roll in a fancy shawl and a silly frilly frock. I stick a purple or blue feather or two in my hair. What do I care if the people stare? Then from my jewelry case, every space I just fill till I am glittering fit to kill. Oh, the thrill when I start dressing up, though my course is creep, I am on a peak, cause I feel so chic in my silly pretty frock. Knock, knock.